All right. Hey, hello, guys. How are y'all doing? All right. Very well. Yeah, it's been a while, I think, since we've all been together. Uh, don't know. Did y'all meet uh, last week? I wasn't there. Not last week, the week before last. Okay, week before okay. last. All right. Uh, yeah, I know I thought about last week. I wasn't able to jump on there from Honduras, but, uh, uh, but man, it's good to be back uh, with you guys. Uh, for those of you joining us, if you have any comments or questions, please ask them, and we'd be happy to uh, look at them and see if we can answer them. Uh, if none of the pastors here can answer them, we're going to default them to Thomas Miller. Uh, he's a resident uh, person who can know it all. So, <laughs> no, there you go, Thomas. Uh, no pressure, Thomas. No pressure. That's it. <laughs> that's it. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's good, man. It's so good. Uh, Roy Carpenter at uh, uh, Toinaville Baptist Church. Uh, Wayne Lott there at Grant Chapel Baptist Church. Um, Chris and myself are at First Baptist Troy. Thomas is one of our. Uh, lay leaders there at First Baptist Troy, our IT guy, the man who keeps us going. Without him, we couldn't be here. So you can blame him for this. A lot but, of duct tape uh, and rubber bands. So There you go. <laughs> there you go. But uh, I know that uh, uh, last time you all did, I caught some of it that uh, Chris, you and Wayne were talking. Uh, uh, I believe it's it's what we as believers uh in uh, re rea realities in the life of every born again believer in Jesus Christ, spiritual realities, spiritual realities. Yeah. And, and I watched that and it was a, a superb. I really enjoyed it. Um, and so I think that, you know, continuing on in that vein and looking at the spiritual realities of, of believers, because I don't think we really realize everything we have that we get, inherit, whatever however you want to call it. Uh, when we become believers, uh, it, it's more than just eternal life in many ways, as if that's not great enough. It's, there's actually yeah. so much good stuff that goes with it. Uh, and, and so and I noticed on one of the things that, Chris, you sent out topic-wise, glorification uh, is one of those things that we as believers receive whenever we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, I'll be honest with you, since I've been a little bit under the weather, I'm uh, saving my voice some because it's not all there. Uh, but uh, let me just throw that out and y'all just take and run with that, the glorification uh, that we receive. Mm, yeah. Well, really, just to throw out a scripture passage um, as we're getting this one started, over in uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 30, the Apostle Paul wrote, And those he predestined, he called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. And so the concept of, you know, coming just right out of the scriptures there, and um, glorified being past tense, a done deal. And so, um, you know, from the perspective of the Lord, it's uh, it's done, but throwing that scripture out to get us started as we get started. Hmm. Y'all way over my head here. I have to catch up. <laughs> I don't know about that. I thought glorification was a final removing of sin from the from the life of the saints, and that's uh, that's what I come up with, and uh, <clears throat> for eternity, and you know. Uh, I know we're all going to keep sinning and we can't get past that point uh, till we get out of here till Jesus takes us home or we, he comes and gets us. We, we are going to continue to sin with that glorification. Now, at, I think it means freedom from the power of sin. In other words, we have an alternative now and uh, we didn't have that before, before Jesus, before you accept Christ as your savior, you don't have that alternative to sin. You, you just fall into it and you continue to do it and you don't realize some people don't realize that there's another way. And that's, that's probably where our outreach part of this, of this program is, is to show people there's another way, hmm. you know, there is another way. There's two sides to this coin. You can, uh, you can't straddle a fence. So that's one of the problems with that good old Christianity is you can't be on the fence. You got to be on one side or the other. And uh, a lot of people have a problem with that. So, yeah, Christ coming, the glory of God is going to be here. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good point, Roy. You know, we are all in in the process. I mean, of 
glorification, I will, but I think where Paul is in, uh, is the fact that we have been glorified because I, uh, to me, when I look at that, it's it's when when the Father looks at us, He sees the Son, uh, and our sins are forgiven, and so it is there. It's the guarantee of the glory of our glorification uh, in that. Uh, and so, let me just throw that out, Chris. What what are your thoughts, or Wayne? Your thoughts? You know, go ahead, Wayne. Okay. Well, you know, I like I like I like when He says now being justified. Now being justified, made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the through through the through the, through the uh, what Jesus done for each and every one of us. When we really sit back and and I think sometimes we have to evaluate uh, uh, the the whole uh, the whole what well the whole in the, in the wholeness of what Jesus did for us. We need to kind of evaluate in, in, in the whole situation and say, you know what, he did he did that for me. And then I think it'll make you not want to do wrong. You know, even if you do wrong, it'll make you realize you've done wrong and you don't want to do that again. Or, or you want to you want to uh, do better. You strive to do better. And like Russ said, you know, just like Romans 3 and 23 says, so I'll have sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all sin it. And the Bible says we, we, we fall short daily sometimes, you know. But now. We can cast those thoughts down and we, we can ask we can ask for forgiveness right then and we can start from anew. And see the enemy would have us to think that that uh uh what we've done is well, he ain't gonna forgive you for this one. But the Bible said we've been justified. And when we think about what Christ done on the cross, see all this goes back to what he done on the cross. And when he said it's finished, it was done. The sin, the sin that 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 we 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 buried the one that we carried, he he uh carried those on the cross with him. So we justified, we've been bought, we 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 we've been bought with a price, we're a new creation in him now. So the thing we need to understand, okay, when we fall short, get up and do better, do right, you know. Uh uh, and that's the blessing, that's the blessing of being justified that. Nobody can hold us in bondage. And I think Christians uh, fall short so many times because they hold their own self in bondage. With, with They won't forgive themselves. Now, if you can't forgive yourself, don't expect nobody else to forgive you. But God already forgave you. So the thing of it is, we need to just own up, own up to our shortcomings and, and start from anew and just realize that, you know, Jesus paid it all. Mm. I think that I think that's good. And, and uh, you know, as I look at this passage again, I think, you know, and Roy, I, I, again, and why, you know, again, yeah, our glorification when we are no longer have sin, sin, you know, when we're in heaven and that. But Chris, does not God look at us once we accept Christ as if it is a done? I mean, it's a done deal. Yeah. That's basically it, right? Yeah. If you look at the, the biblical doctrine of glorification, it's when all of this is done, we, when we are raised and we're with Christ and we're made like him completely, you know, like Roy, you pointed out the, you know, we're under the influence of sin, even as believers here. But one day sin will be eradicated and done away with and we won't be under its influence even. You know, we don't we're set free from its power through Christ. But one day we'll be absolutely free from its influence altogether. And, and if you look at this concept, you know, you read in first Corinthians 15, where, you know, the apostle Paul talks about, you know, what, what kind of body we'll have someday when we're with the Lord and, and it'll be, you know, this, this one's perishable, the new one will be imperishable. You know, this one was sowed in dishonor, the new one in honor, and uh, we will have a body fit for eternity. So when we look at glorification, it's the <laughs> fullness and the full realization of all that God has in store for us, the completion of our adoption, the uh, transformation of our bodies that is described there in, in 1 Corinthians 15 and over in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, um, when we are made eternally fit for heaven. And the fascinating thing, and it's so cool about Romans 8, when Paul says, he says that God has also glorified those you know, who have been justified and are right with Christ um, is that there's this concept in the original language of using a past tense to describe a future event to stress the certainty of it. And so Paul, you know, in, in Romans 30, or excuse me, chapter 8, verse 30, 
he speaks of the absolute certainty of the final and fulfillment of this whole process of salvation as being, he's like, well, I mean, I'm going to describe it in the past tense, even though it hasn't yet come because it is that it's that certain and as believers, you know, when we're justified, we come to know Christ. Then we enter into this process of sanctification where we're becoming more like Christ, the end of which will be glorification when we are finally with Jesus. And I've always loved verse 30 because, you know, you look at if you've trusted Christ as your savior, then your ultimate, the ultimate outcome of that salvation, your glorification, God looks at it as as complete, even though we're not there yet. So it's very encouraging for believers. Well, yeah, no, it's something you can't understand our uh, assurance of our salvation right there. It can't be undone. We It will be glorified. I know it was Colossians 3, 4. Let me read that here. It says, when the Messiah, who is your life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him in glory. So there's the future aspect that we've looked at that was the guarantee of our glorification. I mean, our glorification right there, but right now uh, we're as good as glorified, even though we haven't got there yet. Right. We've got it to look forward to. Yeah. 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 Full scale deal. You know, they asked me at church here not too long ago, what was heaven? What would I be like in heaven? And uh, I told them, I said, well, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus and the boys went up to the top of the hill and they woke up and all of a sudden they saw him in all of his glory and he was shining like a, a white shining light. And I told him, I said, baby, what I'm telling you is I'm going to be shining. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. When I get to heaven, I'm going to shine just like Jesus Christ. Cause it, <clears throat> as we read things, we find out that we are going to be like Christ. And that, that uh, to me, that is amazing. Just, just to think that mm -hmm. I'm going to be like him. Uh, Mm. We're, we're going to inherit the same thing that he got. And mm. that, that, to me, that just, I can't even think about what that's going to be like. I don't know what the rest of you, but that's what glory is going to be, being like I mean, Yeah, I mean, think about that, Roy. I mean, we can't, it's hard for us to grasp that we're going to be co heirs <laughs> with Christ. I know we've kind of dealt with this before, <laughs> but even in the glorification aspect, we are co heirs. Man, imagine what Christ owns. We've we got a part of it too. That mm -hmm. is mind blowing. And uh, that we, I, again, it, it's not just eternal life. It's all this other that's in there. Yeah. And you know, and Chris was talking about Romans 8. Well, Romans 8, 18 says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory, which shall be revealed in us. Not mm -hmm. that, that glory is not going to be revealed to us. It's going to be revealed in us. And I, I think that's the, uh, something that we have to look forward to right there. Roy, that'll yeah. preach, man. That'll preach. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and, and looking at 1 Corinthians 15, when he says, you know, down in verse 50, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. And he tells, he says, I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, the blinking of an eye at the last trumpet, Trumpet sound, dead in Christ are raised imperishable, and we will we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, this mortal body, immortality, and so forth and so on. And can you and to your point there, Roy, the the absolute glory that God will reveal in us in those transformed bodies in the presence of Christ, completely free from even the influence of sin. I mean, we will be sinless from that point for all eternity. It's awesome to think about. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, other part, you know, as we look at, you know, we'll be glorified, but uh, one of the other points, I mean, uh, that you sent for discussion was we're going to join the priesthood. Now, are we going to have the collars around our necks? Are we going to have the little robes that we wear? I mean, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with the priesthood, I mean, folks think of that, but it's uh, that's not what is meant there, uh, that we will be joining the priesthood. So let me just read 1 Peter here, I believe 5, uh, 2, 5 in through 10. Uh, it says, you yourselves as living stones are, are being built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood 
to offer sacrificial sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, for it is contained in Scripture, Look, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and honored cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. So honor will come to you who believe, but for the unbelieving, the stone that the builders rejected, this one has become the cornerstone, and a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the message they were destined for this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a royal nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So thinking of that in the priesthood, uh, becoming the priesthood of the believers, what we call it, I think we as Baptists call it, uh, let's just throw that out there. That's another thing that we benefit from coming to know Christ as Savior. Mm -hmm. But you got to believe. You have to believe. You have to believe. Yes. I, I, love, I love what uh, Jesus told his disciples when he had to encourage them when he was getting ready to leave, when he told them in John 14, when he told them, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe it's also in me. And then he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And this, this is what we're talking about now, he had prepared for us. He said, uh, I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come back and receive you unto myself, where I am, you may be also. And that's and that, that's what I like about it. He had already with the prepare the place, he just ready to receive us, you know, into uh, uh, glory with him. And and uh, like, uh, like you were saying earlier, how within a twinkling of an eye, uh, will be changed, and uh, uh, you know, I think that's that's really the the second time. Uh, I, I think that's the only time really it kind of talk about the rapture uh, in the Bible. Uh, quote me uh, if I might misquote that, uh, but I think that's the that's one of the times that it talks about the rapture with, when we be caught up with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we have something to look forward to, you know. And I always, I always tell people, you know, uh, uh, I, I sometimes you feel like you, you're struggling hard and you, 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 you live going through a living hell here, and you say, well, if I'm going through hell now, I don't want to die and go, you know. So the thing of it is, we 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 have a song that we used to sing called "Standing Up My Timber." You know, are you standing up your timber? Are, are you are you getting in God's word? Are you are you, how you accepting His Son? Uh, are you living for Him? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Because if you are, you will attain uh, eternal uh, salvation. You know, but you got to believe in Christ. You got to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I think Wayne, what you're talking about, we have something to look forward to. What I want to ask you tonight is, what are those people that don't believe? the ones that are not going to accept Christ, what do they have to look forward to? Because, mm. you know, they're going to leave here in a twinkling of an eye too. It's the same, you know, and so, but what are they, what are they actually looking forward to? Yeah, I can't remember, and I should be able to, to use it in my witness. I can't remember when I didn't look forward to eternal life in the presence of God. And mm. I guess maybe that's because I, I've turned myself over. I've surrendered to Jesus. But the thing is, those people that don't believe, the ones that we're trying to reach every week, every day, every Sunday, every Monday, whatever, what are they looking forward to? What do they have? You know, they may have great things here now, but what's the future? You know, he said, leave your, leave your, uh, put your treasures in heaven, not here. And they don't understand that. And how do we reach those people? How do we tell them that, that, there's something else to look forward to except just darkness out there somewhere. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, I, I think really that just goes right in with what this passage is saying. You know, that, that there's a, that the Lord has laid a stone in Zion and it's Jesus. And you can, you can be built on that stone through faith or you can trip over that stone and be broken to pieces through unbelief. And it's a decision that the Lord has allowed, you know, given and allows people to make. And I think as as those who are 
priests in this royal priesthood, it's our job to carry that that message to people who are not, you know, and I one of the things I love about this passage we looked at is going back and pulling its roots from the Old Testament. You know, you had the you had the uh, the Le- Levitical priests and only those guys could go before the Lord, you know, and, and so they were kind of they were the middleman, if you will, between the people of Israel and the Lord himself. And so, you know, when Jesus dies on the cross, and, you know, we've talked about it before in that curtain in the temple that separated the, you know, people from the Holy of Holies is torn from the top to the bottom. You know, God is God says, hey, the way is open. You don't need a human priest anymore. You know, Jesus is your high priest and you can come on into my presence. And so when we, you know, when a person turns away from that unbelief when they hear the gospel and they trust in Christ, their high priest, then they have complete and open access to the father. And I think that, you know, especially in this culture, you know, looking at the way that fatherless is fatherlessness is such an issue that perhaps a message we could take to folks is, you know, Hey, there is a, there is a, there, God belongs to be your father. (laughs) Jesus is the way the way is open and uh, you can be a priest in his house and you can go directly to him you know, by grace through faith in Christ and become part of that royal priesthood with access to, to the father, you know? Yeah. And I think people don't realize that, uh, that what a, a blessing it is for we who are believers, we can go straight to the father. I mean, I know, you know, just use an example you here in the U S if you want to call the president, whoever the president happens to be, it doesn't matter. And so you call the white house, the president doesn't answer the phone. You have to go through people to get to the president. The great thing about we as believers, when we ring the phone, God, he picks up. I mean, we don't have to go through anybody to get to him. Jesus has opened up that that line of communication for us uh, that we can go straight to him. Uh, And man, what a blessing that is that we can just come to the throne of the creator of all things with anything we've got and there's nothing too small or too large for us to come to him. He just wants to hear from us. Uh, yeah. And uh, that is, that is just a great blessing. Amen to that. I've, I've been preaching and studying a little bit about uh, the, uh, that we are the temple. Our body is the temple of God and in, in residing in that body or that temple that we have is the Holy Spirit of God who resides in each believer. And that it's actually, we have the Holy of Holies inside of us as we, as we go through this life and the the Holy Spirit inside of us living in that temple that we're supposed to be providing. And uh, it gives us the power to speak and to give our witness to people out there in the world. And I, I've been I've been doing a lot of reading on this. I haven't really got everything all together on it, but uh, <clears throat> I still believe that 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 glory that we're talking about, that glorification, we we can witness that right now in our own bodies, in in our own minds, in our in our hearts, through that we believe in Jesus Christ and we have a residing Holy Spirit, the very essence of God living inside of us in a temple that we're supposed to keep for God. Y'all can go with that anywhere you want to. Well, you know what, Roy, just immediately came to my mind is over in 2 Corinthians where Paul says, but we have this treasure in clay jars so that the extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. And um, I just, man, I, you really popped into my mind when you talked about the Holy Spirit residing in us and uh, the, that the glory in us is the Lord himself. And to think that we who were his enemies you know, because of sin Mm -hmm. uh, have become his royal sons and daughters and his, his Holy spirit lives in us and is with us for all eternity. And the glory is his. That's good stuff. I have a, I have a little story about um, a true story about like uh, what you're talking about. The, the, the veil have been split and now we don't have to have nobody go pray for, go, go pray for us. We can go to God ourselves. I remember that years ago at my job, and I, I was just at the job for about three months, and it was about time for me to get a uh, a raise or whatever, you know, you know three month raise, whatever they do it. 
So I asked the guy, I said, well, uh, it's about time for me to do get my raise. Uh, uh, are you going to go talk for me? He said, well, no, I'm not going to go talk right now because I think he kind of upset about something. And this went on for like six months. So one day I said, you know what? I, I, saw, a, I saw the plant manager, so I pulled him to the side and I talked to him. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, oh, I'm glad you told me. It just slipped my mind. I'm glad you told me. Okay, I'll get that done for you. And I was like, it's this easy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to go talk to God. Mm. And like we, you know, I think the more we talk to him, the more the more we get more comfortable talking to him and because and, and he, he wants us to fellowship with him. And uh, we can tell him everything and we can tell we can tell Jesus everything because he already know it. But he just wants us to come to him. With all our problems, because the Bible is coming late, coming cast our burdens on Him, you know, and, and that way we won't have to take that stuff with us. Because sometimes we can be carrying a burden that we don't even have to carry, you know. We can just give it to Him. Hmm. That's a good word. That is a good word. Uh, I mean, again, I just all the benefits of being a believer. It, it, it's just. It's just so much, and and I don't know if those who aren't believers really understand what they're missing, and I don't really think a lot of believers, I mean, who are truly are believers, understand what they really have, and that's a shame because we never really live up to what we have because we don't realize it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's got a million dollars and they know they've got a million dollars, they live up to that, if you will. But if you've got a million dollars and you think you're a pauper, you're going to live up to being a pauper. And we've got so much that that we have as believers that we can live up to and that we can uh, uh, we can grab hold of and we can use and uh, that God wants to bless us with. And, and we just miss out on that. Uh, and I think that this is something that folks need to know. Uh, the non-believer, what they're missing out on. The believer, what they have. Amen. I was told a, I was told a story, and, th and this may be a story. I don't know if it's the truth or not, but the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, that when the Jews go to the Wailing Wall to pray, because and why they go there is because that was actually the outside wall of the Holy of Holies of Solomon's Temple. Now, you guys probably know more about that than I do. But what I was told was is that would, they, the reason they go there is because they believe that's as close as they can get to God. Mm. And mm. If, if that's true, if that story is true, I thank God as a Christian because I don't have to go to that wall to talk to God, to mm. get close to God. All I have to do is just open my mouth to get close to God. Amen. Amen. And, you know, Regina, I see popped up on their comments, has made a good, you know, we, we can share. It's up to people to accept uh, Christ. I mean, but our job is to share. Our job is to share what they can receive through Christ, uh, and uh, we we need we need to do that. Uh, but it's up to them finally to whether to accept it or reject it, and that's where the ultimate comes in uh, of the destiny of whether or not they've accepted or or rejected in there. And you know the and Roy to your deal, man. To again to think that as close as you can get to God is a wall. What a terrible thing man i like the idea i can just walk right into his presence you know yeah. not only that his presence is as you said roy he's in us i don't even everywhere i go god is because he's in us mm. well, yeah, you know what did moses say moses said lord i don't want to go nowhere if your presence not with me amen, mm. amen. I, I don't want you to go before me and yeah. that's that's Bible that Jesus go places they make you make the crooked places straight, Amen. and you know a lot of us don't realize that we living we truly living under grace. We truly are living under grace. Yeah. We don't deserve it. We didn't do nothing to deserve it. God has given us the perfect gift that that was His Son, a gift that when I just say He bankrupted heaven when He gave His only begotten Son. He gave all He had. He gave the best that He had. Now. We as believers now, we try to give God the best we have, and that's to serve, to serve him in spirit and in truth. 
and with our whole being. Talk about the, what he say. Love the Lord with all your mind, all your strength, all your heart, with your whole being. That's all he requires of us. Mm. That's Amen. all he requires. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Thomas, how much time do we got here? I think we're about <clears throat> negative one minute. Negative one minute. Well, Thomas, you got any thoughts in this negative one minute? Well, I know where I'm headed, and uh, I'm glad I'm going to be on the welcoming committee for everyone and not the ways and means. So <laughs> I'll just leave it there. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and, you know, and part of why we do this, and not part of the whole reason why we're here, folks, those of you watching us, is we want to encourage the believer, but we also want to reach those who don't believe because it's so important. Uh, we've got more than just here on this earth. We've got after this. And we really believe that. And uh, uh, I know these guys, they want you as well as I do. We want you with us in a place called heaven. And, uh, and we would love uh, to share with you more about Christ. If you've got any questions, you can feel free to email us. Uh, let us know. Uh, Thomas has just put it up there on the screen. Just do that, and uh, man, one of us will get back with you uh, because this is important stuff uh, uh, to know this. Uh, we really believe that. And, Roy, I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind just closing us out in prayer and maybe praying for those who are not believers as they've now realized there's some, it's more than, than just that, than eternal life. There's a whole lot more that comes with it. Father God, we come before you tonight in, uh, in prayer, and we ask that you would be with those that are not believing. Father, that you would call them. And we, we represent three or four churches here, Father. We just ask it, and other churches here in our community, Father, we just ask it, that you would drive them to those churches, that they may receive the word, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And Father, we just thank you for that blessing that you give each of us as we go out today and, and we witness to others that we, you give us the power of that Holy Spirit inside of us, living in that temple, that he that He gives us the power to speak truth and speak your words, the words that would give people insight into the, what it's like to have the glory of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much for him. For his work. We ask that you be with all of those that we've mentioned tonight, that there's a lot of people that we know that have COVID, and we just ask that you would be with them and put your healing hands upon them, Father. Thank you so much for all your blessings. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Folks, thanks for joining us. Kathy, I'll be in the living room in a moment.